welcome to another Lifeline Health Lecture. And um, we are going to cover in this lecture the corrective diet. The corrective diet is a diet that, uh, well, on this slide it says that uh, I myself uh, um, wrote this diet, and I did write it, but I didn't really invent it. This diet uh, is taken out of the scriptures. And uh, it has been, or we have been using it for quite some years now. And we have even a few doctors already who are using this diet with their patients. And it has given us wonderful results in uh, reversing uh, all kinds of different uh, chronic diseases. And uh, people have been able to lose weight with it without really being hungry. We have uh, had people who have increased their energy level in a tremendous way. And so um, it's really, it has really been a big blessing to many people. Now, it's God himself who invented this diet. And uh, I would like to share with it, with you, how I uh, found out about it in the Bible. And uh, we have here in uh, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 29, we read, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, and the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed. To you it shall be meat. So God has given us the instructions here about what we should be eating. The problem is that most of us, we don't read the Bible, and so, of course, we don't know what God has told us to, uh, to eat, and sometimes we read it and we don't really understand it. So God gave us all the plants that bear seeds or that produce seeds, and uh, what we eat are not the plants. What we should be eating are the seeds of these plants. And now there are two different kinds of seeds that these plants produce. For example, we have the group of the grains. And the grains are something like rice, corn, wheat, oat, uh, oats, and barley, and uh, uh, millet, and quinoa, and all these wonderful things. That's one group. And then we have another group, the legumes, which are the beans, and the lentils, and the, the chickpeas, and all these good things. Now, I like to divide the seeds of the plants that we eat. I like to divide them into two groups because there is a huge nutritional difference between these two groups. The grains, for example, are very high in carbohydrates, and the legumes are very high in protein. And that's why I like to keep them separated because we can eat freely of the grains. You can eat, eat as much grains as, as, uh, as you want to as long as you eat them uh, in, its, in their natural form without being refined. And then the second group, the legumes, because they are very high in protein and we have learned by now that we should keep our protein consumption as low as possible, that we always uh, get too much of protein, at least in the industrialized countries. And so I like to keep them apart because the legumes, we should really eat them very, very sparingly. Maybe once a week. I personally don't eat them more than just a few times a year cooked because uh, when we sprout them, the, the legumes turn practically into a vegetable. All right, so these are the seeds that the plants produce that God has given us as food. And then he gave us the fruits 
and the seeds of the trees. And the fruits, of course, we know the fruits as the fruits. It's the same word we use nowadays. And the seeds of the trees, we call them nuts. So we have another two groups of foods here. We got the fruits and the nuts. And the same thing is uh, valid here as for the first uh, two groups. Of the fruits, we can eat as much as we want to. We don't have to restrict ourselves in eating fruits because they have wonderful nutrients and they have also a good amount of carbohydrates. The nuts, on the other hand, are very high also in uh, proteins and they're very high in fats. And the nuts, we should also eat them very sparingly. In fact, we should not eat more than four nuts a day because uh, of their high content of protein and also because they are a little bit uh, difficult or harder to handle uh, by our liver. So we don't want to mistreat our liver. So these are the four food groups that God gave Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. The grains, the legumes, the fruits, and the nuts. But then something terrible happened, and uh, according to the scriptures, Adam and Eve committed sin. And when they committed sin, uh, their relationship with God was changed because they didn't feel peace with their creator anymore. They suddenly felt guilty and they started to hide in the Garden of Eden and God had to look for them. Now, when we lose the peace with God or peace with our neighbors or we lose peace with our spouse or our family members or our working colleagues and, or whatever, uh, or if we become very worried or afraid or if we under emotional stress, whatever, we know now that in this state of mind, our body will produce a tremendous amount of acidity. So we will produce a lot of acid. And I believe with all my heart that when Adam and Eve lost their peace with God, that they started to produce a lot of acidity. Now, acidity is something that will definitely kill us. It will eliminate us. It will make us sick. And uh, so acidity is really something terrible. And uh, God now saw the need to probably alkalize Adam and Eve because he wanted them to live for hundreds of years more. And I believe that that is the reason why he changed our instructions on nutrition. Because after sin, in chapter 3 of Genesis and verse 18, it says, Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herbs of the field. So the ground would suddenly start to produce thorns and thistles, and it still does. That's why we have to weed our crops and work for a good harvest. And uh, God says, Ye shall eat the herbs of the field. Now, when we eat herbs of the field, now we don't usually speak about herbs of the field. You don't say, well, I'm going to have a salad of herbs of the field, or you don't go to the grocery store and go to the department of herbs of the field, but you go to the vegetable department and you buy your vegetables. So God added to the, the uh, Eden diet, he added to it the vegetables. Now, 
what do we eat of the vegetables? Because uh, vegetables have a part uh, on top of the ground and sometimes they have parts underneath the ground. What do we eat? Well, it depends. If it's a lettuce, we would eat the part atop, uh, above the ground. If, if it's about potatoes or or carrots, or red beets, we would eat the part below the ground. It's all vegetables. And you know, the reason that God gave them to Adam and Eve after they uh, started to feel guilty, and uh, I'm sure they started to produce acidity, so God added these vegetables to it. And that's, this already will show you that if you want to know which are alkaline foods, well, go to the vegetable kingdom because everything in the vegetable kingdom is alkaline. It doesn't matter whether it's the green leaves or whether it's the potatoes, everything is alkaline. And if you want to do anything against your state of acidosis, then you have to use in a big way in, uh, uh, in big quantities the vegetables of the field. Now, said all this, we end up with uh, five food groups. The grains, the legumes, the fruits, the nuts, and the vegetables. These five food groups were the foods that God's people ate for probably, we think, about 2,000 years because they eat, ate these foods from the day they were uh, thrown out of Eden until the flood. That was the time span in which God's people lived of these uh, five different food groups. And I tell you, people did pretty well on it because they lived an average of about 900, somewhere around 920 years. I, I'm not sure uh, exactly, but it's some 918, 920 years, something like that. That was the average life uh, span of the 10 generations before the flood. So if you want to live healthy and live a long life, these are the food groups that you should eat. And that's really all you need. You don't need anything else because all the nutrients that we need are in these five food groups. And uh, if you eat them the way God produces them, then you don't really have to worry about supplements and, uh, and all these kind of fancy things that we use nowadays to hopefully stay uh, healthy. So it is also these five food groups that you will find in the corrective diet. Now, what I did is, in the corrective diet, I separated the foods. Because when God gave us the food groups, he gave us acidic and alkaline foods. Why did he do that? Well, our body needs a perfect balance between acid and base. I have mentioned that already in my lectures before. And when God made us, he gave us an alkaline body that by function constantly produces acidity, but he put the alkaline body producing acidity into an alkaline world. So alkaline body producing acidity in an alkaline world, that was absolutely perfect because uh, it was easy to eliminate the acidity. And so God gave us some alkaline foods and he gave us some acidic foods. But the situation has changed, friends, because now we do not live in an acidic, in, sorry, in an alkaline world anymore. We have managed to make this world so acidic that it is affecting our health. And now look at it. We have an alkaline body producing acidity, and now it is living in an 
acidic world. So alkaline body producing acidity in an acidic world, now the acidity is in majority. The acidity that we produce cannot be eliminated anymore in, by just living in an alkaline world. We have to do something special. And uh, what I did here now is that the five food groups that God gave us, I separated the foods into alkaline and acidic foods. And I took out all the acidic foods of these diet. So whenever you look at the corrective diet, you will know all the alkaline foods because they're all in there. If the things are not in the diet, they're probably not um, not. Uh, alkaline, because um, the, the acidic foods are the ones that I took out. Now, this diet is called a corrective diet. It's not a permanent diet, because you cannot permanently stay just on alkaline foods. Because if you eat strictly alkaline foods, it will start to alkalize you, and you will get out of your state of acidosis and you will start to become alkaline again and then you will have a need to start to incorporate into this diet some acidic foods. But this is something that we will probably dealing with a little bit later too. So this here now is the corrective diet. Now, the corrective diet is uh, based on some uh, technical facts and, uh, that have to do with our metabolism. For example, in the morning, this diet is recommending us a big raw salad. Well, when people see that first, they say, oh, you got to be crazy. Why do you do such a thing? In the morning, you have a little bit of cereal and a little bit of fruit, right? That's a good breakfast. Well, it's very strange to me because mostly everybody, at least here in this country, knows that we should have breakfast like a what? Yes, we should have breakfast like a king. And we should have uh, lunch like a prince, and we should have dinner like a pope. Good. What does that mean now? We should have breakfast like a king. Does that mean we should have some, uh, some uh, uh, smoked ham in the morning and uh, we should have a glass of wine with it? No, that does not really mean it because uh, we should not eat like a king, but uh, we should have a breakfast that has the qualifications of a king. The king is the most, most powerful. The king is the richest. So we should have the most powerful, the, most, the biggest, the most heaviest, the most nutritionist meal in the morning. But what do we usually do? We have a little bit of cornflakes, and if you are Adventist, then uh, you would probably have some uh, extra fiber cornflakes with some uh, good uh, silky soil milk, right? Because Adventists live very healthy. So um, the extra fiber and the cornflakes that don't contain any nutrients at all anymore because it has usually all been destroyed in the process of uh, manufacturing. So at least we got some fiber in there. That's good, yeah. And then uh, we have these uh, silk uh, soil milk. Uh, soil milk, first of all, is uh, very high in protein too. And then the silky soil milk, that's made with chemicals. That's not naturally silky, but we like it that way. So put some chemicals in there. And that's, that's what we call then a breakfast like a king, the most nutritional, no, most nutritional uh, meal that we have in the morning, right? Well, I don't agree with that, and that's why I made a little changes uh, to the diet. So we are going to have in the morning the most nutritious and the heaviest meal. The heaviest meal, if you talk about um, vegetarian meals, a vegan meal, 
Because if you include meats or something like that, then what I'm going to say now would have to be changed a little bit. But I'm referring to vegan meals because that's the only way how we can stay healthy anyway. So if you want to stay on, uh, on meat products, on, on animal products, on meat and cheese and milk and all these kind of stuff, then don't even bother with all this here. Then just accept that you will get a heart attack, a stroke, or a cancer. Because 90%, which means that 9 out of every 10 people in this country will die of one of these three diseases. So then, if you don't want to give up these animal products, then just save uh, some money for a coffin because they are getting more expensive now. So many people are dying. So, but if you want to live, then... Let's, re uh, let's learn the rules that we need to live a healthy lifestyle. So at 7 o'clock in the morning, our digestive system has the highest, the biggest capacity to digest. And the raw vegetables are the slowest foods to digest because they have water in soluble fiber. So the raw salads are the slowest foods to digest for a vegan. And we should eat that at the moment when our, our digestive system has the biggest capacity, the highest capacity to digest. And now you might say, oh, what a casualty or, or what a coincidence that in the morning we also have the biggest need for nutrients. And the biggest amount of nutrients, we'll find them in the raw vegetables. What a coincidence, isn't it? Well, you can see there is some kind of intelligent mind behind all this. These things do not happen just by accident. So we want to have at Around 7 o'clock in the morning, we want to have the heaviest meal of the day and the most nutritional uh, meal of the day. Then there is another fact that I took in consideration, and that's our liver. At around 5 o'clock in the afternoon, our liver will partly shut down its function because it will stop to receive the nutrients from the food that we have been eating. So after five o'clock, we should really not be eating any solid food anymore. And there is another reason why uh, the timing of the meals that we have in the corrective diet, the other reason is based on our natural, uh, of the natural capacity of our body to detox. Now, the body will never detox as long as we are digesting because our body is a one-way uh, highway, let's say. It's a one-way street. Or nutrients go to the inside or toxins come from the inside out. So or things are going in or things are coming out, but it never happens at the same time. So we should... Start detoxing at 9 o'clock in the evening, the latest. Now, it happens to be that if you eat a vegan meal, it takes about four, four hours to digest it. And then in about the six hours after you ate, you'll start to detox. And uh, if you eat, for example, your last meal at 3 o'clock in, in the afternoon plus 6 hours would make 9 o'clock in the afternoon. So that's why I recommend to have the last meal at 3 and not later. If you have it at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 6 hours later, you will be detoxing. And uh, that is wonderful because then we get all the time that we need during the night for detoxing because... Our body will detox only until 4 o'clock in the morning. It will always stop detoxing at 4 o'clock in the morning, even if it just started at 
at 3 o'clock in the morning to detox, and even if he has only one hour to detox, he would still finish at 4 o'clock. So if we start at 9 o'clock in the evening, then that would make seven hours of natural detoxing of our body during the night. And that's a perfect time. We need about six to seven hours of detoxing during the night. Now, if we eat the food later, then that's not going to happen because we, are, uh, we will be digesting during the night. All right, so these uh, effects are the ones that I took in consideration for the corrective diet. And now let's go into it and look into it uh, section by section. The first thing that we want to do in the morning is we want to drink some water. And we should have about one quarter of the water that we need during the day. We should have that in the morning before we have breakfast. Now, in the first glass of water, it usually should contain between 12 and 16 ounces of warm water. And uh, warm water because it will clean out and flush through very nicely our system. And why would we want to heat up the water with our vital energy if we can use electricity or any other kind of, of uh, power source to heat up the water? So we want to drink 12 to 16 ounces of warm water, and then we wait about 20 minutes, and then we're going to have the juice of one or two or three or four lemons that we will squeeze out, and then we will add the same amount of water to the lemons as we got lemon juice, so that it would be 50-50. Then we want to drink these lemon juice. Now, how many lemons do we want to use? Well, if I am in excellent state of health, I would use one lemon. And if I'm a little bit obese, or if I uh, suffer diabetes, or have any kind of uh, uh, health problems, or even if I have cancer, I would probably use the four lemons. And uh, so according to our health problems, the way they worsen, we would increase the number of lemons that we are using. These lemon juice in this concentration will help us to uh, fortify and cleanse our liver. That's why we chose these kind of relationship, 50-50. And please don't use any sweetener with it, of course. And uh, then another 20 minutes later, we want to drink the second glass of warm water. And remember that we need to drink one quart of water for every 45 pounds of body weight. All right, then uh, about 20 to 30 minutes after we have had all this water, then we are ready to have our breakfast. Now, at breakfast, everything should be raw, absolutely raw, nothing cooked there. And we want to have a big salad because it's in the vegetables where we find the biggest amount of nutrients. And now, our salad consists of about three different parts. We have what I call the green part. Now, the green part is not really everything green. It contains other um, vegetables, too, because it contains, uh, like, for example, uh, uh, red uh, uh, bell pepper, or maybe you can put in some, uh, some yellow squash in there, or, or things like that. And um, so, but I call it the green part because this part is very heavy on phyto, phytonutrients. It is a very, it has a lot of nutrients in there, vitamins and enzymes and all that. But in this part, we don't have any carbohydrates in there. And so for carbohydrates, we need to find some special uh, vegetables that can supply us carbohydrates because that's the fuel for our body. And the biggest part of our salad in the morning should be the part that supplies the carbohydrates. Now here I got sweet potatoes 
or, or carrots or even red beets. These are the three vegetables that you can use to uh, add the needed calories to your salad in the morning. Now, the carrots and the red beets are quite sweet, and I don't like them too much. The one, one I like best, and I always recommend, are the sweet potatoes, the, these uh, big pink sweet potatoes that they sell everywhere in the supermarkets, and we will just peel them and shred them nicely and then put a little bit of lemon juice over it and a little bit of salt, and they will taste delicious. In fact, they taste better than the red beets or the carrots, usually, and um, they will supply you with uh, carbohydrates that are released a little bit slower, so they will keep you from getting hunger much more time than carrots or red beets. Now, for the, in this carbohydrate part, I always uh, I also put in there avocado. Now we can have, uh, I would say, hopefully no more than one quarter of an avocado in there because avocado is very high in protein. And that's why we want to be careful with it. So this is the part of our carbohydrates. And then we go to another part, and that's the sprouts. Now, the sprouts, we have different uh, kinds of sprouts that we can produce, and we'll have a whole lecture still on sprouting, but here in the, in the, uh, the diet, I got, um, I got uh, the legumes, and, uh, and on this picture here, I don't have the grains there, but we can spr sprout uh, legumes, like, and the ones I most recommend are uh, monk bean and lentils, because they are done in about a day and a half, you can start eating them. But they are uh, quite high in, in uh, protein, but not as high in protein as cooked lentils or monk beans. And uh, then we can also sprout uh, the grains. And uh, grains, we have alkaline grains, like for example, example spelt and quinoa. They are fantastic. We can sprout them, and we can also put them into our salad. And sprouts will have give us a tremendous amount of, uh, of nutrients. Then the next thing that we would have in there are the nuts and seeds, because we want to have some nuts and seeds in there. Now, you can see here, I recommend to use uh, almonds, because almonds and uh, um, Brazil nuts are the only alkaline nuts. The Brazil nut now is very high on oil. That's why I don't use it in the diet. So use almonds. And it says almonds or, not and, not almonds and sunflower seed, but almonds or sunflower seed. Have one or the other. Don't have them together. And so you could put in there like four almonds, because that's the maximum we should have, or you could have one or two tablespoonful of sunflower seeds in there. And in addition, in addition to all that, you want to put in a tablespoonful of sesame seed, because the sesame seeds are very high in minerals, and also they are very high in fat, so they will give us a very good fat. Remember that uh, sesame seeds, ground sesame seeds, make tahini. All right, and now, whether we use the almonds or the sunflower seeds together with the sesame seeds, we want to put these seeds then into a glass of water during the night, and we will activate these seeds. And then in the morning, we dump the water and we can put them in, the, uh, in our salad. Then we also want to add one tablespoonful of flaxseed to it. Now, the flaxseed is very important because it has been proven to reduce cancers. There has been some very good scientific uh, work on it that ground flaxseed will reduce um, tumors in our body. 
So let's use one heap tablespoonful of ground flaxseed. By the way, they will also give us the omega-3 oil, as we learned in our uh, nutritional lectures. So um, now the flaxseed, we don't want to buy it ground, because if you buy it ground, then the oil in the flaxseed is rancid already. So you want to buy the flax seeds in seeds and then grind them at home. There are two ways how you can do it. You can either buy a little, these little coffee grinders, or maybe you still have one from your old life left over when you were drinking coffee. And uh, so you, use, you can use a coffee grinder and just grind the amount of seeds that you need for your meal. That would be ideal. But you can also use a blender if you don't have the coffee grinder. But then you have to blend a little bit bigger quantity and you will blend it in, in dry. And uh, then you use what you need to use and whatever is left over, if it's ground, you want to put it in a plastic bag and then you can put it in to your freezer. Don't put it into the fridge. Put it in the freezer to make sure that the oil will not get rancid. It will keep better in the freezer. All right, so we got our seeds there. And uh, now we need to think about the dressing. Of course, we don't want to use uh, regular salad dressings. We want to uh, use natural things. And I recommend to use uh, some uh, lemon juice over your salad. And you can also crush some garlic and put that over there. And then I recommend to use some salt. Now, with the salt, I very strongly recommend always to use real salt. Real salt is a brand. It's a brand name of a sea salt. And it, is, it comes from a mine. So it is a salt that has been produced are deposited after the flood. And the flood, in the flood, in the, the oceans of the flood, we still have not had all the toxins that we have in our oceans now. So if you use salt, uh, 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 sea salt, that has been produced now, I'm not sure how clean that stuff may be because the oceans are very contaminated. So if they want to refine the the, the salt so much that there will be no toxins in there, then I'm pretty sure there will be no minerals in there anymore either. And um, so if they refine it and they lose the minerals and the toxins, if they don't refine it very much, then you got minerals in there, but then you probably have some toxins in there too. So please use the real salt. It is not very easy to get but you can get it in uh, health food stores or whole food stores. You can get it in there. Then you can also use something that is called pita seasoning. Now, pita seasoning is a seasoning that is a mixture of herbs, and um, it comes in a powder form. And I developed these years ago, and uh, I like to use it on my own salad. And it was very good, and so I would sometimes take it with me when I was visiting other people. And uh, I had a couple that uh, were friends of mine that I would go and visit, and they had seven children, an American couple with seven children. And these children, when I was visiting there, they always wanted to have a green salad in the morning because Peter brought his seasoning with him. And so they call that pita seasoning, and later on they say, well, why don't you just start to produce this thing, and, thing and, and make it available to people so that they can sprinkle it over their salad. So that's the history of uh, the pita seasoning. Uh, you can order it from us if you like to, and um, it's very good, it's very tasty and very healthy, doesn't need any refrigeration, and it lasts all the time you want it to. Now, that's the dressing that we want to use. Oh, and I want to mention that you hopefully don't use any oil on it, not even if it's good, 
extra virgin olive oil. We don't want to use it. Remember, I told you already before, if you cover your salad up with the oil, then you cannot digest it readily in your stomach because the oil is digested in the small intestine. And so we're really creating a problem for our digestive system there. All right. Now we'll go to our second and hopefully last meal. The first meal, I recommend to have it at 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock or before. I would not eat too early if I could avoid it, because usually in the morning we don't feel all that hungry. It's easier to pass without food in the morning than it is in the evening. So if you, you have your breakfast, your a big salad at 9 o'clock in the morning or before. You cannot have it after 9 o'clock because then it will be too late. And uh, we'll be talking about this also later on. So have your breakfast at 9 o'clock or before, and then at 3 o'clock I would recommend to have your second meal. Now, the second meal, 50% of it, would be cooked, and 50% of it would be raw. And the raw part would be fresh fruits. But let's go to the cooked part first. Now, we want to use only two things in our meal. We want to use a base and a vegetable. And it will all be steamed, because this part will be steamed or cooked. Now, for the base, you can either use a tuber, like, like uh, a potato or tikiski or malanga and all these wonderful things that you can find nowadays in the stores. They usually come from Latin America. That's where they are used quite a bit. And uh, so have either one of these, or you can have one of the grains, the alkaline grains that we can have in the corrective diet are spelt, quinoa, amaranth, and buckwheat, and millet. These five are alkaline, and we can steam them or cook them, prepare them just like rice, and then have them together also with a vegetable. You can have one or the other as a base. Now, if you are very overweight and you want to use, lose weight, then use potatoes. The more potatoes you eat, the more, the more weight you will lose. Now, people always look at me like I was crazy when I say that, but it is true. Make, try it out. Potatoes will not make you gain weight. They will make you lose weight. Look, for example, this here would probably be, this size would probably be a medium-sized potato. And a medium-sized potato only has about 90 calories. So a person like myself, I would need approximately about 2,600 uh, calories a day to, uh, to get through my day. That's my, that's my caloric need. And if I would try to satisfy it just with medium-sized potatoes, then I would have to eat about uh, 28 to 29 medium-sized potatoes. You know what? There's no way I could ever get them into my stomach, even though I'm a very good eater, but they don't fit in my stomach. So the more potatoes you eat, the more uh, or the bigger your, your calorie deficit will become. So, and that's, why I believe that mostly the, the overweight people in the, uh, in the, out there in the world, they, uh, the, the, the overweight people don't eat potatoes because they think they will gain weight, and the skinny ones eat a lot of potatoes be and because they think they will gain weight, and nothing is going to happen because the skinny one gets skinnier and the overweight person gets more overweight because instead of potatoes, they eat grains, which are much higher in carbohydrates. So, eat potatoes if you want to use, lose weight and have it with a steamed vegetable. And you can eat as much as you want to. You don't want to overload your stomach, but don't be worried or concerned about the calories because with this diet, you can eat as much as you want to, but only twice a day. That's the important thing. So then we will go to the second part of our second meal, which would be 
the, uh, the raw part, the fresh fruits. And now the fresh fruits, you will see that there are five fruits that I do not want you to eat as long as you are acidic. And these are oranges, when it's the sweet oranges that we have here in the U.S., if it is one of the sour oranges that they have in the uh, third world countries, they are alkaline. The sour oranges are alkaline, but not the sweet oranges. They are acidic. So the sweet oranges, we don't want to have them. No pears, no plums, no mangoes, no blueberries. These five fruits, you should not have them. All the rest of the fruits, you can eat them freely as much as you want to, but don't combine more than three different fruits. Okay, and that would be our lunch at 3 o'clock. Now, if you have some special needs, like some people that just never get used to two meals a day, even though if they would try seriously, they might be able to get there, but... Uh, if you have to eat light side, let's say your first meal at 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning, then your day might get a, be, a little bit long. And so then you might have to have three meals. Then you have in your first meal the raw salad always, no matter how early it is. And the second meal, let's say at 12 o'clock or so, then uh, you would have your cooked food and then at Four o'clock, if you eat at 12 o'clock your cooked meal, your lunch, then four hours later would be four o'clock, you could have your fruits at four o'clock then. Or if you eat at one o'clock, then you would have your fruits at five o'clock. But you should not eat anything uh, solid after five o'clock. So then you have your uh, fruits and that way you would be on three meals, which would not be, will not be as good as being on two meals. You'll understand that later on. And then I recommend in this diet to use some green juices. Now, these green juices are a very important part in this diet. As I explained you already in lectures before, that our foods nowadays contain the best 50% of the nutrients that they were containing 50, 60 years ago. And so if we fill our body up with the food that we normally eat, then we only get half of the nutrients that we used to get. So we want to get some concentrated nutrients into us. And uh, for that, we want to produce uh, green juices. But these green juices, they will also help us in a very uh, um, concentrated way to get alkaline. And the sicker you are, the more green juices you want to drink. Now, green juices are made 50% from carrots and 50% from green leafy vegetables. Now, you can't make juices from green leafy vegetables with a fruit juicer, which is usually the, user, the, the juicer that people have in their homes. So you would have to get a wheatgrass juicer. And the ones that I recommend most, most is the Omega 8003 or the Samson. They are almost the same. There's hardly any difference between these two juicers. And the advantage they have is that they are slow-moving juices. They only have between 75 and 80 revolutions per minute, and they will not mix your juice with air. And that's important because if you mix it with air, the nutrients will oxidize, and you would not be able to keep it. But if you make the juice with these, any of these two juices, then you can keep it all day long in a glass jar and the, oxid the nutrients in there will not really um, uh, oxidize. And the other reason also for these juices is that they are quite inexpensive. They are much cheaper than most of the other juices, and they only have one agar, so uh, it's the best juicer that I can recommend to you. 
Now, the juice, we want to drink it between meals, not with the meal, because we won't, don't want to dilute our digestive juices. And you can drink them between meals because they will not really start your digestive system because there is no fiber in it anymore. Everything is liquid, and so it is uh, something that is easily absorbed by our body. The, um, you can drink these juices until 6 o'clock in the evening. So if you don't have any health concerns, I would say you should drink at least a big glass full, maybe 16 ounces a day. Or if you want to get used to your two meal cycle and you get hungry between meals and have one in, at noon between meals, and if you are afraid to get hungry in the evening, then have another glass full at 6 o'clock in the evening. It will help you to make it until 9 o'clock before you go to bed, until you go to bed. And uh, these juices, um, if we are very sick, then we want to increase them. You can even stay on these juices for days and for weeks. You can stay on them for a month, or you can stay on them for two months. And the longer you stay on these juices, the better you will detox your body. If you have uh, cancer, I would go what, but very strictly on these juices. I would drink uh, uh, three or four quarts of juices a day. I would try not to eat anything almost anything else, and just go on juices. If you are diabetic and you go on these juices for two or three days, your diabetes will probably be gone. But uh, whenever you reverse a chronic disease, don't go back to your old lifestyle, because if you do, you will definitely uh, go back to your old diseases that you used to have. Okay. So these are the green juices, and then here we have the quantity of water that we want to write down. It will be one quart for every 40 pounds, 45 pounds of weight. And remember, we should be drinking water every 30 minutes so that we can hydrate well our body, and we should have water about 20 to 30 minutes before a meal, and then after a meal we want to wait for one hour until we have our, um, our first glass of water again. And then down here, you will write in there the meals that you're going to have. It says the number of meals. It should be the best two meals, never more than three meals. And then you write down the times here so that you're sure that you'll always have your meal at the same time. It's very important because the body will start to produce gastric juices even before you eat. And then you have a very good uh, digestion. This diet then, we want to keep doing it for about two months. There is a little disclaimer on here that you should read if you ever ask us for this diet. I'm sorry, I went too far here. I thought I had another section there where it says two months. So this diet, we should be doing it for about two months. And then after two months, you want to start checking your metabolic pH because we don't want to become too alkaline. And you need to check your pH because otherwise you might think that you are alkaline already and you're still not. Because believe me, if you are over 50 years old and if you have a, a little bit of fat in your body and you are quite toxic, it might take you uh, several years because before you get out of your state of, of uh, acidosis. But uh, only children, only younger children would be able to get out of these, uh, state of, their uh, state of acid, uh, uh, acidity in uh, uh, let's say two months or so. But after two months, you should start checking your pH. We're going to have a special lecture on the pH and how to measure it and, and what to do and how to make all these changes. So just uh, um, keep watching these, uh, these lectures 
so that we, you will learn the rest of it because uh, so far we are still at the very beginning. We have been speaking about the nutrients that we need and where we get them from best. And uh, now we have learned how to uh, use the different foods. And uh, so we will still have to learn how to check our pH. We'll have a very nice lecture on, on sprouting. And um, we'll be covering also all the other seven laws of health because so far we're only dealing with uh, one law of health. So far we've only been dealing with nutrition. And uh, I hope you will be able to remember all these things. And uh, if not, you uh, may uh, ask us for the... the, uh, the the DVDs, because you might want to listen to these lectures again, because I'm aware that the information that you're receiving here is very concentrated, and it's a lot of stuff that you need to remember, and if you just uh, seen it on TV or you've just seen it on the Internet, you may not be able to remember all these things. So in the meantime, I uh, hope that you will be... Uh, soon starting on the corrective diet and that you will be able to uh, follow the directions and become uh, um, an example of good health to others so that you will be able to tell others how to get and stay healthy. And uh, then you would be doing the, your fellow men a big favor just as yourself by getting healthy. Thank you.